Let's uh, bring your attention to this story now. The N2 in the south of Durban is uh, still closed to traffic after a part of the Prospecton overfly partially collapsed yesterday following days of heavy rains. Sunral engineers are investigating the exact cause of the problem to determine a way forward. Now, it is uh, the part of the bridge over the southbound lanes that uh, has sagged. To expand more on this, let's welcome Professor Richard Walls from the Department of uh, Civil Engineering at Stellenbosch University. Prof, thank you so much for your time and good afternoon to you. So let's get right to it. What, in your view, uh, could be the reason that led to this partial collapse? Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to the, the viewers. So there are a couple of things that could have happened. Obviously, we're looking at a concrete bridge over the river, and it looks like at the support it's dropped perhaps around 300 millimeters. And so, and it seems to be one on one of the main beams. So there's a number of beams next to each other. So probably at the support, something has happened. And there's a number of things that could have um, affected this or influenced this. So we'll wait for the engineers to, to give us the full details. Uh, at that position, you often have what's called a bearing, which is a large steel and other materials, which allows kind of a, a rocking action and allows a sort of a specific type of force to be transferred from the concrete into the supporting columns. So it's very possible that something is, has happened to that bearing, um, maybe with the floods or, or damage, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, the only other thing would be is unless immediately above or immediately below the bearing, something has happened there. There's been some damage to the concrete um, of the beam itself or below. My suspicion is, is something to do with the bearing. They say this is without having seen pictures of what it looks like underneath. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the Sunrail engineers and their consultants will have a, a pretty good idea already what's going on and then the next steps. They've got some good people in the ranks. So we're just going to have to wait. And I'm, I'm pretty sure within the next couple of days, we'll hopefully hear some, some news of what this next steps will look like. Mm. And I mean, you, you mentioned floods. We, we mentioned it also in the introduction. In fact, some KwaZulu-Natal officials, you know, at the, the start of this um, incident, I have raised concerns that, uh, you know, potential storm damage from dating back to 2022 may have gone undetected, which may have led to this collapse. I mean, I know you, you said that you would have to inspect underneath particularly to, to have a view of this, but what are the prospects of, of that being a factor? Uh Yes, I mean, that is a possibility. So could past damage in previous floods or current floods yeah, have in, but yes. Uh, hopefully inspections did occur after the, the previous floods around 2022. And I don't know if it's experienced other floods more recently, but especially if those flood waters came right up to the, the level of the bridge. I mean, the pictures currently show the water level quite a bit lower. So it doesn't look like it's in the last couple of days that it's been affected, but, but maybe I'm mistaken in terms of the, the flood waters dropping. But yes, yeah, so hopefully previously there were inspections so that they would need to go to their record saying what information was gathered, was there previous damage, or perhaps it, it, it just wasn't detected at that stage, but uh, they do have a, um, a repository, a database of bridges and inspections, etc. So they hopefully have a, a good um, database to go back to and look at the past reports and to find out where the issue is. And uh, I'm, I'm just hoping, I mean, I'm, I'm being optimistic, I'm hoping that they can solve this um, relatively easily. I mean, well, not easily, but w without doing extensive demolition. I mean, the, the some of the social media posts seem to make, make it sound like it's about to fall into the river and everyone's about to die. But I'm hoping that they'll be able to jack it up and then replace and, and repair what has occurred there. But I mean, that that's speculation until we know what's, what's being done. Um, there's some good engineers that are looking at this right now. So I'm sure we'll hear soonish what, what the next steps are. And hopefully they can bring this back into operation within weeks, but we'll, we'll find out. Mm, and I'm, I'm glad you, you're confident because there is concern, of course, going into, you know, the festive <laughs> season that there is going to be a significant traffic on that particular bridge. But one of the local ward councillors has been also reported as saying that that particular infrastructure also supports sewage infrastructure. And you can actually see some of the beams submerged in water. I mean... For something like that, I would imagine that you would need to maintain that bridge over a period of time. But when you include natural disasters like uh, heavy rain, storms, etc., would you then have to have those, um, you know, inspections more regularly? 
Well, bridges inherently are critical infrastructure and there are protocols for regular inspections. So it's it's quite an important thing and there's highly qualified certified bridge inspectors that are allowed to do it and they have to do it on a regular basis. Yeah. So <clears throat> my suspicion is there has been a reasonably recent um, inspection of the bridge. I, I stand to be corrected. But yes, there's a lot of services that run through our, our bridges and it's, it's they are critical infrastructure. So yes, if they were to fail in a flood or in a disaster or a some sort of issue. Um, yeah, you will wipe out sewer lines, you can wipe out electrical lines, there's often a lot of other services in, in addition to that. So that's where maintenance, testing, um, and all these things, ongoing support are very, very important. And some, some of the organizations in South Africa are doing quite well, um, some, especially some of the municipalities struggling. And so we need to to make sure, because the problem is if a bridge goes down properly, as I said, I might, I'm, hopeful that this can be repaired quickly maybe i'm wrong but we'll we'll find out soon but if a bridge goes down then it's a massive thing as you point out i mean losing the n2 in december will be a bit of a disaster with the amount of traffic up and down um, or at least even losing a couple of lanes it'll it'll really bottleneck that whole area so hopefully they have contingency plans in place should that be a worst case scenario uh, but yeah, I mean, we need to spend money on maintenance testing, competent people. Now, unfortunately, it's not a popular thing. Maintenance is pretty boring, doesn't win you votes. Often there's a lack of focus on it. But as it, this is not to say necessarily that this is Sanral's fault. I mean, people will immediately blame it. It's not necessarily the case. Uh, we don't know what the recent floods were like. And so they, we should give their engineers a chance to go out, check it out find out what the problem was, when it occurred, why this has happened. I mean, maybe there's a good reason why this occurred. We, we don't know at this stage, so I can't you know, throw anyone under the bus because that would be rather unfair at this point in time. Absolutely. Prof, well, thank you so much uh, for your time and, of course, for explaining as much as possible what you do understand, uh, Professor Richard Walls from the Department of Civil Engineering at Stellenbosch University.